The last minutes of the final game of Eurobasket 2022 were the culmination that no one expected. The hall was crowded with spectators who watched with bated breath every throw, every pass, and every movement of the players. Sweat floods the eyes of the captain of one of the teams, but he continues to struggle, hearing only the hum of the crowd and the heavy beating of his own heart. As soon as the final whistle blows, the hall explodes with cheers, and camera flashes illuminate the arena. It seemed that this was the end that millions had dreamed of. However, in the midst of the celebration, the players and the audience did not notice that something had gone wrong. After the award ceremony, journalists began to publish articles about the triumph and defeat of the teams. Soon, a strange news caught everyone's attention. Several people from the support group and technical staff who were on the site suddenly fell ill. The symptoms started with headaches and fatigue, but in a matter of hours the condition worsened. By morning, one of the patients, a technician known for his love of sports and responsibility, was found dead in his apartment. This news has stirred up the public. The doctors who performed the autopsy were puzzled. No traces of poisoning were found, infectious diseases were also excluded. Meanwhile, the players and the staff of the arena began to share strange observations. One of the guards on duty at night said that during the game he noticed light, almost imperceptible shadows running through the stands when the arena was still half empty. Meanwhile, the main character of the story, an experienced sports journalist named Eric Stevens, decided to conduct his own investigation. Eric, who was used to covering sports events and interviewing champions, now found himself facing a mysterious puzzle on which his career, and possibly, his life depended. Turning to the history of the arena itself, he discovered that in the place where it now stands, there used to be an ancient barracks, in which a bloody suppression of a riot took place during times of political unrest. These events were forgotten, drowned in documents and local legends that were passed down from the old timers to their children. Among the stories that Eric heard, the most eerie was the one that talked about how, after the massacre, the surviving soldiers heard other people's footsteps, moans and whispers in the night. These sounds followed them until they left the area. But the scariest thing was that years later, everyone who survived that riot died under strange circumstances. Eric began to notice something strange in his life. In the late evenings, while working on articles at home, he caught movement outside the window out of the corner of his eye, heard rustling, as if someone was coming to his door. Eric understood that a simple coincidence and the stress of work could not cause such feelings. He decided to turn to his old friend, archivist John Greens, who had already helped him with investigations more than once. John, a man with encyclopedic knowledge and a flair for hidden details, was skeptical at first, but agreed to help after hearing about strange deaths and unknown symptoms. Meeting late in the evening in the archives of the city library, Eric and John began to look through old records and articles related to the territory of the current arena. They found documents that indicated that the barracks was destroyed for a reason. After those events, rumors began to spread among local residents about the curse imposed by dying soldiers. The last record found, made by an old journalist at the beginning of the last century, stated that the earth, soaked in blood, never rests. The deeper they dug, the more anxious it became. Stories of strange deaths, seizures, and mass panic among workers who tried to erect buildings on this land have been repeated from generation to generation. Eric felt his anxiety grow with every detail he found. It seemed to him that the air in the archive was getting heavier, and the shadows in the corners of the room were getting thicker. And then Eric and John discovered something that made their hearts clench with fear. A yellowed accident report from the middle of the last century mentioned an engineer named Thomas Harrison, who led the first attempt to build a sports complex on the site. The document stated that Harrison, unable to withstand unexplained nightmares and strange incidents, committed suicide, leaving behind one short note. This does not belong to us. We are in their shadow. Eric decided not to stop and continued to explore every detail, every fact that could shed light on what was happening. With each new story found, it became clear that the mysterious deaths and illnesses that began after the Eurobasket final were not an accident. What happened in those years was coming back. The next day, Eric began to notice strange changes in his condition. While working in the office, he found himself unable to concentrate, and a strange feeling of constant observation haunted him even among colleagues. The room seemed too quiet, and every sound, the creak of an armchair, the rustle of paper, made him shudder. In the evening, heading home, Eric could not get rid of the thought that someone was watching him. He kept looking back, but the streets were empty. 
Late at night, he went back to work on the materials. An ancient map of the area, where the barracks once stood glowed on the computer screen. Suddenly, there was a soft knock behind him, as if someone had gently touched the door. Eric froze, listening. The knock was repeated, but louder, more insistent. He went to the door, but there was no one behind it. When he returned to the table, he noticed that all his notes had been shifted. The sheets with drafts and copies of old reports were now in disarray. His heart began to beat faster when he saw a new sheet among the papers, which had not been there before. It was a copy of Engineer Harrison's note with the words underlined. We are in their shadow. It was as if someone wanted to remind Eric that he was getting too close to the solution. The next day, John called Eric to discuss the new findings. His voice sounded strained. He said that he had found documents that mentioned certain rituals performed by soldiers before a deadly battle. These rituals were symbolic and intended to forever bind the souls of the fallen to the earth. John was sure that something related to these rituals still kept this land at bay. Eric did not have time to answer, as the call was interrupted, and a shadow flashed through the window of his apartment. Rushing to the window, he saw an empty street, but there was a mark on the glass, as if someone pressed a palm against it. Eric stepped back from the window, feeling cold sweat trickle down his back. The room became unbearably quiet, even the ticking of the clock seemed to echo in my ears. He dialed John's number, but there was no answer. The feeling that his friend was in danger increased his anxiety. Deciding not to waste any time, Eric grabbed his jacket and rushed out of the house. The night was cool, and the city was plunged into semi-darkness, illuminated by rare lanterns. Eric drove to John's house, thinking about everything they had learned over the past few days. The answer was close, too close to retreat. When he arrived at his friend's house, he noticed that the windows were dark and the door was slightly ajar. Once inside, Eric felt that something was wrong. The smell of damp and old paper hung in the air. The room was in a mess. Books were lying on the floor. Papers were scattered all over the table. John, he called, but there was no answer. Suddenly, a barely audible sound came from the depths of the apartment. Faint, like a moan or a whisper. Eric walked deeper, feeling his heart beating faster and faster. He found John in his office, staring at a single point on the wall. His eyes were wide open, and his hands were shaking. Eric, they're here. They're watching us, John whispered without looking away. Eric tried to touch him, but John jerked violently and clutched his head as if he was in sudden pain. At that moment, something hit the office window, making a thud. They both turned around. A blurred shadow was visible on the glass, half hidden by the darkness of the night. Eric rushed to the light, turning on all the lamps in the room. The light tore through the gloom, and the shadow disappeared, leaving behind only a vague feeling of something alien. John caught his breath and looked at Eric. We have to get out of here. They don't want us to get to the truth, he said with a tremor in his voice. Eric nodded, realizing that there was no turning back now. Everything pointed to the fact that their investigation had gone too far and had awakened something that was better left in the past. 